they call it Little Guantanamo or Afghanistan's Abu Ghraib. Heading back to the notorious Bagram prison, these are some of the former prisoners. It's not easy to find the way in the sprawling 30 square kilometer town. Even the Taliban had to stop for directions. But once you enter, the scale of the prison complex, which once held tens of thousands of people, becomes evident. Building after building, door after door, the men which were once held here remember their humiliation and torture at the hands of U.S. soldiers and fellow Afghans. Imitating what the guards did, they wouldn't let me sleep, says Farid, who spent seven years in different cages. He was in physical therapy for extensive torture by Afghan and American troops. He says tortured prisoners were hidden in another block, away from media and humanitarian organizations, until they would heal. My legs are still weak and in pain. They yanked my private parts with a cable. I was bleeding from it for almost six years. No matter how many times we said we didn't do the crime, they would torture until the prisoners said yes. From uniforms to prison cells, inmates here have been telling us that this was one of the worst places to have been mentally tortured. If they did not behave well, these air conditioners would blow very cold air during the winter and very hot air during the summer. Picked up in a right raid, Molabi Hashmi remembers being blindfolded and paraded naked in the early years of the prison. He thinks they were being fed dog food smelly meat as he remembers it. American girls would come dressed in bikinis to take us to the toilet. We got three minutes for a bath and these girls would watch us. Then there were no Afghan guards here. Nobody was allowed, not even the Red Crescent. They made us watch sexually explicit films and we weren't allowed to look away. We were sleepless. Our interrogations were almost 10 to 12 hours. Rights groups such as Human Rights Watch, Amnesty International and the American Civil Liberties Union have corroborated similar testimonies of torture and abuse. In 2004, the U.S. Army charged 27 soldiers and enlisted personnel with criminal offenses, some with maiming and involuntary manslaughter. Some prisoners were teenagers. They say others were brought from different countries on rendition flights. The complex was also home to the largest military base, a lifeline for U.S.-led coalition troops in Afghanistan. Ahead of secretly leaving the base at night, U.S. forces say they destroyed nearly 15,000 pieces of equipment and sent over 700 loaded C-17 aircraft out of Afghanistan. Scrap is what's left of Black Hawk helicopters, generators, vehicles and other equipment. But the real stain on the legacy is the abuse. Tens of thousands illegally detained without trial that's how they'd wake us up, says Qari Shahabuddin. They knew we'd be upset if they disrespected the Quran, so they'd throw it in the toilet. I spent almost a year here. It was a scary place. Bagram was a place of utter cruelty and barbarism. Taliban fighters say they feel happy to be here once again as victors, not captives. Some feel the world knew them as barbaric monsters, which is how they see their captors. Sama bin Javed al-Dazira. Background Prison.